Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Grand jury witness brings Mueller to his knees with this shocking look inside his Russia probe. One witness on Mueller's grand jury has had enough and is speaking out against this drawn-out witch hunt. Ron Tarasson wrote this powerful op-ed for the Daily Caller, where he reveals the disturbing details inside Mueller's corrupt investigation. From the Daily Caller, on December 15, 2017. I spent the day testifying in Washington, D.C., in front of the Mueller Commission Grand Jury at the United States District Court. As Business Insider first reported in 2012, I was approached by Paul Manafort and Rick Gates to do public relations work for the Ukrainian government, and not to report said work to the Department of Justice as required by FAR laws. I am the president of a large public relations firm in New York City. Manafort and Gates also implied they'd pay me offshore. Kyle Arfrini a special investigator in Mr. Mueller's office, strongly urged me to do my patriotic duty, drop all my professional and personal responsibilities and appear immediately in front of the grand jury, about a short meeting held over five years ago which I vaguely remembered. I reluctantly woke up for a 6 a.m. shuttle flight and spent the day in court. Prior to that testimony, I shared the limited details during interviews with government investigators. I verified that I spoke with Manafort and Gates a few times in February and March 2012. I shared the handful of emails of which I was in possession and testified under oath that the emails were accurate. After hours of repeating the same thing again and again, questions then veered into Russian names I'd never before heard, including Konstantin Kilimnik, and questions about previous work I have done for Russian oligarchs, confirming that I know Roger Stone, worked for Eric Trump's foundation in 2017 and more. Yes, my New York City-born kids understand Russian as my ex-wife is Russian, and yes, they attend the same New York City school that Ivanka's and Jared's kids did. After being thanked profusely by Ms. Freeney and a series of stern-looking attorneys, alone, I exited the courtroom, ignored questions from the media outside the courthouse and took the acela back to my Park Avenue office. Not surprisingly, Manafort and Gates have been indicted, yet nothing has connected this matter to President Donald Trump. This investigation feels like a witch hunt, even more so after reading yesterday's CNN report that. Special counsel Robert Mueller's investigators have questioned Russian oligarchs traveling in the U.S. about whether they donated to Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. One oligarch was questioned and his electronic devices searched when his private jet landed in the U.S., and a second Russian oligarch was also questioned during a recent trip to the U.S. An informal interview request has been made to a third oligarch who has not recently been to the U.S. If, in fact, foreign money came into the United States and impacted elections, then it must be uncovered. Yet is it the American way now to question the most powerful people of a foreign foe as those people enter this country? What would our government say if billionaire GOP donor Sheldon Adelson was questioned when visiting Russia? How would we feel, say, if George Soros's private plane was searched upon arrival in Moscow and he was questioned? Our government would rightfully be in an uproar, and Russian President Vladimir Putin is right to raise hell if these reports are accurate and he will surely order American billionaires to be questioned in Russia. It is a dangerous, slippery slope, and one which has nothing to do with the mission of the special counsel investigation, which is supposedly to explore links or coordination between Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and the Russian government. By now, the cost of this government investigation is tens of millions of dollars, including an $86.52 reimbursement check I cashed for travel. Finally. This week there was the first sentencing of someone indicted by Mueller. Stop the presses, a 34-year-old attorney of Skadden Arps was sentenced to 30 days in prison and fined $20,000 for lying to the FBI about not reporting work he did for a Ukrainian oligarch, who he's related to. He should be charged and punished. Yet, is this the most important task for the Department of Justice? Yesterday, media reported that my client Felix Satter was questioned about Russian election meddling. Satter a real estate entrepreneur and former partner of Donald Trump, sent an email in 2016 to his childhood friend, Michael Cohen, who is Trump's lawyer about his desire to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. The deal went nowhere, and Satter, now having spent who knows how much in legal fees, is being dragged repeatedly to Washington, D.C., to speak about his desire to build a building. What in the world does this have to do with Russians meddling in the election? Satter who alleges that he is a former high-level U.S. government intelligence asset who provided vital security to the government for years, came to the United States at the age of eight, is an American citizen. He is American-educated. And while he is, in fact, well-connected, 
he's about as connected to meddling in the election as I am to life on Mars. In February, the House Intelligence Committee memo revealed that a dossier funded by the Democratic National Committee and the Clinton campaign led to the creation of the Mueller Commission. It's time for this witch hunt to end. There are plenty of things not to like about President Trump, but if the American people seek to remove him from office the place to remove him is at the ballot box. Enough is enough. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.